Okay, we're going to show you how to put a 206 RBL-25 knockdown table together. We bought this machine through A&M Industrial Sewing Supply, San Dimas, California, for $3,800 including $225 shipping. This package, when it came with the machine and everything, weighed 350 pounds. So for $225, that was a bargain. I have since talked to A&M Industrial Sewing Machine Parts down there to the guy who is named Michael, and he tells me that they're shipping that way less expensive. They're eating some of the cost because it should be more like five or six hundred dollars. It does not come from them straight away. It it comes from New Jersey. And so they never see this machine before they send it out. That causes some headaches because if there's damage to the table or anything, they've never seen it. But they really are good to work with. I am not in any way hooked up with them. I uh, don't work for them. But when we got this machine from the factory, from factory reps, it's actually made in China. It's been made there for about 15 years. Originally it was a Japanese machine, clear back in the 1900s. Quite a few revisions have been made. It looks a lot different now. When you get this shipped to you, you have a choice. The website there from A&M tells you to check it out, check the package and the contents out. Well, you can't do that on the dock or even when it's delivered to your home. The trucker won't sit around and do that. But what you do have, you do have two choices. One is to reject the package in its entirety or two list the damaged items or packages on the bill of lading or the delivery ticket and then sign it. Then you go ahead and take it. I would suggest you go ahead and take it. Either way it's going to take you months if it is damaged to uh, get this thing running again. But that's probably the best of the two alternatives. If you're a factory or even a personal homeowner and you want to run this thing right away, take it. See if you can live with the damage until you can talk to A&M and get it straightened out. But they seem to be very nice to work with and I think they'll take care of you. But it does take a month to get this machine sometimes. As I'm ta talking to Michael down there in California uh, at A&M, he says they pre-buy these over in New Jersey and they're supposed to be sitting there. We're finding out Conso wants to sell them out from underneath them. So when they go ahead and get an order in to ship it out somewhere in the United States, they find out there's no machine sitting there for them. That is one problem. I think the shipping takes a month anyways. You don't, you can't get a tracking number until about two weeks into the thing, into the order. So I noticed that the A&M has a pretty good rating on eBay. That's where we bought this. That's their store is on eBay. And they have a 99.2 rating as of right now, which is pretty high. If you look into what the bad that ratings are, the ones that uh, reviews are that are bad, it's always seemed to concern the bigger machines, even the smaller ones, because they don't seem to come straight from California. And so they have to, some of the complaints were it took a long time for it to get to them, or it was two weeks and they canceled it. So bear in mind, these things take a while for some reason to get here. Now we had a little damage on the end of our packages which would be the end of the table here um, but it was not when we took it it didn't show any damage on the table it was just in the cardboard box both ends this sticks out way past the pallet and so it would be banging around on other things no damage there the only thing we found that had a little damage was this tray that you get right here is split out because this is literally packed full of bolts from the factory. I'm not real interested in this tray, so I I didn't bother worrying about it. I want to get a bigger one. Now down at AM they say they got bigger ones, but this this is how this sits on there with three six screws underneath the table and it slides. I don't know what I'll do yet, but I definitely want something bigger to hang underneath this table right here for all the sewing supplies. 
because you're going to wind up with a bunch of them. Even a file cabinet next year or something would be a good idea. Anyways, we also got an extra foot feed. This machine came with an extra setup down there for lifting the foot because literally this 25 inch cons console is a long ways to reach from here to this end of the machine to lift that foot. You can do it from the back and that's what we're going to do is walk around this machine kind of right now to show you some of the interesting parts. We'll start here on the front and this of course all your thread tensioning. Thread comes up through here. We've decided to thread it a little different than the instructions. You can do it as you wish. This long arm comes with a bobbin winder automatically built into the top whereas normally I think the smaller machines still put out the uh, winder down here underneath you mount it on the table right down here so back to this you adjust this screw here with one of the allen wrenches that you've got so that when that bobbin is full you, you twist it right here on this shaft to change that and then it snaps out automatically okay so you'll notice on this that you see the white belt that's what comes with it uh, this is the pulley that's originally on the motor. It's a fairly big one, but I changed it for this. We'll probably explain that a little later maybe, but right now I went a lot smaller. Gives you lots more power, especially with a servo motor. It's not a clutch motor that runs all the time. It's more like a power drill. And so at first, when you first pull the trigger on the rheostat, the drill doesn't have any power and really no, neither does this one but this really cured this that's the smallest pulley for a three-quarter shaft that you can buy that I found for a 3L belt and of course conveniently we only found this dark colored fractional horsepower belt which is common automotive shops and parts has that now that was a 43 inch belt to start with I had to shrink that to a 41 inch belt and the adjustment over here, right there, I'm going to switch here a second. Now that adjustment right in here, the nuts are top and bottom. With that belt with the old pulley, it was clear to the end of the threads even there. You can see that I shrunk that belt by two inches, made a smaller pulley on there, and I have more adjustment than it did when it came new from the factory belt. So they're changing some... So they've changed some stuff and that belt's really too long from the factory and I'm still a little long on this belt but that's probably never going to stretch and never going to wear so and you don't need these tight you don't want to run that tight that's not very tight so don't tighten them up I like a little slip well it's not going to slip but in case something happens something gives Okay, so now on the back side, you notice this hole right here and this one. This is for the lamp that's supposed to come with it. I had got no lamp. And when I was talking to Michael, it's such a cheap lamp, they wouldn't wish it on their worst enemy. So they have another one that they like, that they supply to you. According to him, you are supposed to get a lamp for that. But as you can see, with your material running through this throat here, you wouldn't want that in the way. So this this from a, on a long arm, 25 inch long arm, that's all the way across over to here to where you want to see is about, would take a lamp that's got about a reach of a 36 inches. So what I did is I went to Granger, WW Granger, and bought this machine lamp and put a little dab of that one bolt right there is a American fine thread, which surprised me for being a foreign machine but I believe probably all these threads are American on this machine or fine threaded or machine screws or whatever but there's the lamp I bought for seventy six dollars and it's built stout that's not gonna break off it's not but what's interesting is that about 21 inches you can reach all the way around that head to thread the thread or whatever now another th another thing about these lamps on this for running the machines we found that you can whereas you can get the LEDs they're very shiny when it comes to the chrome on this thing so we went for the 
went for this spotlight type uh, fluorescent. A mellow light would be better with higher power because the LEDs are so shiny on the chrome that you can't even see the thread when you're threading it through here after it's in there. And we threaded it a couple times, it didn't even, you couldn't even tell you did it wrong because you couldn't even see it through those chrome friction discs right there. This one and this one is chrome. Okay, so the other thing I want to point to back here is this arm and this hole right here that I have drilled. Now I don't recommend you modifying your machine in any way because who knows, of course this is just the table we're changing, uh, whether the factory would honor their warranty or not. Um, so this is all on your own when it comes to this, but I'm going to tell you about this arm. It comes clear over here and lifts the foot. With this pedal, for me, I made this pedal right here be the foot lifter. It's kind of like the brake is on the left of an automobile. It lifts the foot. Now, I had to drill this hole and make sure the motor mount didn't interfere. That chain didn't, I wasn't trying to drill through the motor mount. So you have to kind of make sure, as you see, that motor mount is what takes up space here on this side. And I went through underneath down there. I'll show you that better in the front. But I traced that out and then made sure I drilled the hole. It's in line side to side with this hole right here in the machine. Normally with a knee trigger lifter, a rod comes up here, has a bend in it, and then comes up to the arm and pulls it. Well, with this kit and with this long arm and not being able to get over to where the knee bender is, uh, lifter is, if you drag that chain down through that hole and lift with it, it'll every time you hit the pedal it's going to bang this machine arm against the machine and then finally pull it. I didn't want all that happening so I wanted a straight, straighter pull. That just about cures it. So in line with it, make sure it's just right at the edge of the machine mount, motor mount where that chain can go through without hitting. Okay, and that's still very tough lever to get to lift with that big pedal even. And also at first I was hanging up over here on this bushing that lifts this up in this machine and I have video of that little escapade in the in a probably in a future video. So look for it. It'll be on the internet fairly soon. YouTube. YouTube. Now, while I'm here, you have a mess of bolts that comes with this and you don't know which washers go where or anything. But what I've decided finally that worked out was that the washers, the bigger washers, and you see the big washer there and then there's a small one under that one. You don't hardly see it. You only really have enough washers of big ones to go on where a nut head or bolt head uh, is on a slot and so for support you'd want to do that everywhere so on the back side of this one is just this one is just a little washer and on the back side of this one is the big washer so you do that everywhere these are all little washers there's no slots down here but you can see how I put my bracket on there with the actual web side webs pointing in so they're not sticking out. You could theoretically put them out. You don't seem to get much support there because there's gap there. It doesn't really hit that to keep it from wobbling. And also like up here, you've got gap on both sides. So if you don't hold that kind of straight when you tighten up the screws, it, uh, this table looks like it's gonna try to fall over. It looks pretty ratty looking. It's a good strong table, it's gonna hold this up well easy but you kind of want to line it up either put this side up against the top and bottom or try to center it whatever but get them, get them straight so they look straight up and down okay the motor is there you'll notice that this is a bracket we'll talk about that later it's extended that was not on the motor but you sure seem to need more than just this to go down to the pedal this actually came off of a spare pedal that I managed to 
they managed to throw in, unbolt it off the top here. It's the same as these down here, like that. And this long one was there on the top of that pedal. You have to bolt those in with the little screws. And you don't really get much of a washer there either, but it's it's there, a small one on that quarter inch bolt. And then maybe you can see here too how I put the big washers on this cast iron right here. Okay. Or the bracket is cast iron underneath it holds this this pipe. We'll take a better picture of that too. So I think I've explained everything I needed to on this side. Okay, so you, here's the switch, the on and off switch. You can mount that anywhere, anywhere that the cord reaches. I put it over here because my outlet's on that side of the machine, but normally it's you mount it on the other side. Up here is the oil, what they call the oil pan. This is just a drip pan to keep the drips from falling on the ground. This would be the hole that you'd want lined up for the knee actuator if you had one. And then this end of it has this notch cut out here theoretically for uh, putting the bobbin in and out. So that means you want the pan to the right as far as you can without having any of the machine bearings up in here drip oil off the tips of this and onto the floor. So really you run this pan quite a ways over to the right. You want to kind of make a measurement, make sure you get that over and uh, so you have room for the bobbin. Um, this pan needs to be mounted as low as possible down underneath this table because there is no clearance between the machine and the top of that pan to speak of. So keep it low and try to keep it level because more it has a very small lip as you can see right there that actually keeps the drips from happening. Uh, you know it holds that much oil before the drips happen. I decided here on mine because it seems to want to drip oil right about here up in the machine when I oil it because so I put a, a piece of plastic over that so it, it missed that hole so I've got that kind of blanked off there okay so now to the shaft the cast iron brackets mount under here you could point them either way but it seems like this shaft needs to be back to the back of the table as far as possible. These feeds, really I would like them closer to the front I think it'd be easier on you to work them. But that puts angles up in here to the linkages at kind of funny ways. It doesn't give you all the leverage you need. This is my lifter foot and like I say when you get the springs and everything tightened up it's hard to push. This is a little brackets that you get in the the kit that are just just a little 90 degree little bracket with a pin here that's going into this foot feet a little ways and maybe I can get the, a picture of the well it's I don't think so there's a little tang little tang right here on the end of those that goes down in this slot which means you really can't put a washer on that side and I've got the small washer up on top because there's no slot there but it sort of holds that um, it holds this from pivoting back and forth and that's with that slot to some extent keeps it straight once you get that bolted down, it, bolted down it stays really well here I have the big washer on top and the bolt going down from the top to down because if you want to move this around after you turn this table table over and set the machine in lifting this you know up here and getting that bolt out if it's pointed the other way it doesn't happen so put them in this way in case you want to change that lower beam to some other spot like forward or back uh, it's much easier to get into these other slots here if, if you can pull the bolt up okay so here's your linkages that come in the kit and I like to get them nice and straight so that there's no rubbing or binding down here because you need all the force you can. But if you if you notice there's some play in that and that kind of tells you that spring load in there is working well. Now normally this is your gas pedal 
and this would be your kit lifter whoop, lifter foot right here. I switched those and went the other way to uh, get out of the pitch a little bit. I like it. So that I had more of a foot pedal. This is the brake, like on a, a car, which I think is more intuitive. And this is the gas pedal. You can see how this gas pedal is going to make some noise. Oop, it's trying to run too. Okay. Goes up there, and now that rod is long enough to make this travel up to here. And those are all able to be spring loaded so that they're nice and easy. This shaft is put in here in such a way that this crank lever here is absolutely opposite, just exactly in the same spot as this side. And when you pull down, it doesn't try to deflect this pipe. Notice it's fairly easy to deflect, but because I've got it setting in that straight across from each other and they're pulling against each other, all it is is trying to twist that pipe. And that is just a pipe, kind of like conduit. So I figure that's kind of a weak spot there when you're trying to lift that heavy lifter foot up there and the amount of pressure this one takes. Okay, so be aware of that. You might be able to put a steel rod inside of it to beef it up if you want to try something different. And that would be the problem with moving this foot feed or this lifter foot and this whole thing forward forward in the machine is you're going to get some weird angles here. It's not nice and direct. This one in particular, the, the gas pedal. Moving that anywhere else coming straight down off the motor where it's mounted would put that at an angle. And that's probably going to work because it pushes easy. That was the top of, off of a, off of the extra foot that I got, which really worked perfect for my situation. But you can go down to the hardware store or something and get some uh, inch wide 3 16 iron, put a couple holes in it, bend this one, put a hole in it for this to lengthen this. But I like this much longer arm. You can come straight down off of that if you want to your pedal. Just move your pedal over. Again, this is a long arm machine, so I'm trying to get us the operator over to the left in front of the head, you know, as close as possible. I really think that they should ship. I don't know how if the plywood table would take it, but this leg ought to be clear to the end of the table over here because your knees, this is where you want your knees, right? Right in this area. So you're either straddling that or you're trying to crowd over here where the pedals are. Use a two foot method here or a, or a single foot. Okay, so just get your hardware piece of steel there and put it in for that motor mount there. Now here's where I, that hole comes down. Let's see, right here. Oop, um, I tried to not bang things because that's annoying on the video. This chain is coming down th right through that hole and straight, virtually straight, a little bit of a bend. But you see I missed the motor bracket right there. It touches just a little. That's good. That's perfect. It's not enough friction to worry about it. And you put the chain in, hook it up best you can. I just left the, the rest of the chain lay on the floor. Well, let's go up in here and see if I can give a better up and down view. Yeah, see there. Rubs the wood a little bit, rubs that, but that's as close as you get. If I move this bracket forward, I'd come off of that a little bit at an angle. You know, this one right here, like I say, move that underneath one forward. You know, on this machine. Well, that's getting a little too close and blurry, but anyways, I want to go under here and show you the cast iron nuts and two bolts there don't really need washers on this side because it's a big hunk of cast iron but this is as far back on that middle middle slot as you can get well, I don't know where I'm pointing to here I guess it's blue sky anyways this is the I'm viewing it from the side front right side and uh, about got it slid back to the back ones. Uh, you know, you could flip that over and put it in the back slot and get any kind of combination of, uh, of placement here. You could flip it 
around and bowl it in back here. Doesn't really matter. And again, here's my pulley, and you want alignment here for this motor to be right up through the middle if you can with the motor mounts slid the motor slid just about clear out of this out of this slot on this side and all the way in on that side it came up to be in the middle of the, the slot in case you're wondering if this is where you'd want to set your machine up is it the at the longest position you see the other piece in there slides slides up and down so you're questioning where, where it should be I, I'd start clear at the top this works really well with a kitchen chair height so I don't you just want to go right to the top okay let's talk about this thread stand here real quick the first little pipe has the threads in the nut under it you just simply bolt it on and put the protect, thread protector there underneath it tighten it up rubber washers top and bottom there actually there isn't a washer there it's a steel washer and on top is the rubber one and a steel washer come up where the first pipe put your your thread holder on there right now which sets the bolts up like that put the little cones with the felts on upside down to hold your spool then the, these, these, these I finally figured out what these were. Um, you can either run regular thread bobbin, little one on there, or or the big cones like that. But this, <laughs> this is actually supposed to be. I've got two of them, but it actually fits in this lamp hole. I believe they were supposed to be drilled holes in certain spots here, because when you tip that machine back, that's where it's supposed to hit oops somewhere like that and uh, hit hit the machine so it doesn't come back well on this long arm this is bent out here so far that it just rests rests on that you don't seem to want to go anywhere another thing to do is center this machine in this side to the other side over here because it starts, when you tip it up, it starts trying to pull the Formica off the table. So what I did is I pushed it forward and then put a little bead of silicone in here to push these hinges forward. You see that? That worked. And I glued that little chip back in with some, some JB weld. Okay. Now I'm also going to go into a little bit of oiling on this thing where they say the little red d dots are those are where you oil a couple of drops I guess they don't really tell you you can oil this sleeve here where you see it move uh, the the uh, rule of thumb here I would say is if it moves oil it if it doesn't move oil it because there's a lot of spots here this there's also other spots that they forgot to mark even on this one. This is a spot here that needs oiling right here next to the this last thread guide and there is an instruction that I finally found that you points to that. Now these here rubber plugs they need to be oiled too and I think some of the instructions ignore those but that one and then we come over here we got two here this plug needs oiling and this one needs oiling. Then this cover, this cover here has reservoirs, reservoir to oil, and that does other things besides just oil. I think the wick does go over here, but it oils other things too. So this needs to have its little oil, and it's marked oil. It's not a little red dot on it, but it should be. These are little wick ones right here, and here this is by no means a complete oiling guide here that you should but you should be aware of them came from the factory pretty oil but it tells you that you need to oil them anyways this one here this one right here needs to actually you need to stick your little pointer in there quite a ways to get the oil to to oil what it's supposed to oil and you've got this one down here um, 
that little bobbin winder actually you could oil a, a bearing underneath there might want to take the screws out and look at it and see where you oil that there's nothing been done for that okay then we got these little red spots but you also got this this one to oil you got this to oil you got these three down here in the in the back side of the machine here on the head to oil and then you also got a few spots in here to oil and I'll be showing this later because I had some trouble in there I'd take this apart and fix it but you could oil down underneath this Right underneath this, where the lift, whoop, maybe I wasn't showing it, lifter foot is, and that's that one on top that I showed you the oil too. But you see this little wick rope here, this one goes up here, goes through these different spots, and then it's tucked, tucked right down in there. Not, not this one, not this end here you see here, but back in there along the machine. It, the end of it sits in a little reservoir that has oil there and I think from oiling everything up above that reservoir fills up. I can show you another view of that. Maybe. Well, it's down down back in there you can see the end of the down back in here you can see the end of the rope down in there really tough to see there maybe you can see it now and all the oil from up here drains down this throat of this machine and fills that up so when you tip it back you get a big wad of oil on your countertop here and uh, that really needs to have a little oil down in that reservoir to keep that rope working. Otherwise you've got to manually oil all these spots which is a new design situation because you had to do that all by hand to start with. And there's still a couple. There's this one to oil. I think this bolt would need oiling. It wouldn't hurt to oil I think up here this thing up on top of it. Well that is the hole for the red. That's the reference, so you can oil that. And I would say you want to oil this little two hickey back in, back right in the, there, that thing. So oil it if it moves, oil if it doesn't move. Okay. Okay, I tipped this machine up now. You can see. For your viewing pleasure, I'll point some more things out on the oil. Um, of course, these bearings are what those little red dots are up on the throat oil. Most of this. Um, this is your little lock clutch here, automatic throw out clutch to save the needle. Or uh, I don't think it saves the needle, but anyways, uh, and that spins it with a little ball bearing and lets it go here. So. You'll have to read your instructions how that, if that ever snaps these. Okay. So, again, oil everything. But most of this is oiled from the top, too. This little reservoir guy down in here is an automatic for this. Virtually all it is is this bushing right in here. Automatically keeps a little oil on that. You take this plug out, fill it full of oil until you see the little red line fill up. And, uh, and put this plug back in. Down under here is a little adjustment for how much oil gets put through. And your little, I think your little uh, Allen wrench works this plug here with a little nut that stops it. So you loosen that nut, turn this in until it's kind of kind of tight you're squeezing that tube that plastic tube that 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 uh, rope is in 
and you back it out a couple of three turns. Kind of whatever you want to use. But you got to make sure you fill this reservoir. It was not filled at all from the factory. You got to make sure you fill that up right away. And, and do that. And then the adjustments seem to be about right. So I'm not saying that they don't adjust that a couple, two, three turns out off of squeezing it. Your instructions tell you some of that too. These little spots here that this shaft works on are oiled from those little red dots. It wouldn't hurt if you wanted to. to I think they are. Well, it wouldn't hurt to put a little oil there or even if. If they are oiled from above. Okay, pretty plain from here on. Um, again, some of these bushings here are are oiled from above, but wouldn't put a drop on the side of that shaft right there. And this little wiggler here wouldn't hurt to have it oiled right up here, dripping down on it. This one dripping. Your your book show you, but here's another spot right here. This might be oiled from above, but I'd put a drop right there. You could also drop it on the outside too of those shafts. This is not meant to be exclusive, but you can see, uh, maybe that video will see it, but here's where the ropes go through, right there, you see them. The oil from the front of them little red spots, it's up there. So really pay attention to where things are going. You can take this screw, This there's one of these up on top too under that big cover thing you can take that screw out and there's a set of gears running there next to each other you could boil them they've got a little white and looks like white lithium grease smeared onto the gears in there you want to probably put a little grease on that once in a while take that off put it back on that comes apart in two halves there split right here it's really not uh, I suppose it aligns the gears a little bit but it don't really do nothing but cover them up so I think I'll let that go for oiling, but read your book and make sure you oil everything. I haven't shown you everything, so do a good job. Before I leave this, I want to show you that oil pan and how far over I have it. It just barely clears the end here, and you want as much, a little bit more room over on this side. I have it so that this just barely this end here, it just barely catches the end of this where this is going to drip here. I should be over just a fraction to the left, but here's the problem with that is you go reaching in here to this bobbin, this stuff's all in your way. It's the bobbin's right here, okay? Oops. Bobbin's right here. So keep that pan over to the right and all the way down. The little nails. There. Also these little feet that you mount. You get four of these little rubber feet. Little Phillips screw, little baby one goes in here. Probably the same one that goes in that tray. Um, but just screw that in. And it fits the curve one way better than it does the other way. So we'll put it in right. Now one more thing before I leave you on this video is the foot feed and the rear stat on the motor. See this rheostat right here? You can adjust it for for full speed or slower speed. I've got it down there quite low. And when I hit it with that pulley, that small pulley there, this is all the faster it runs. I guess I gotta get it turned on a little bit. good power because uh, it'll go through several uh, runs of marine vinyl, so three layers, four layers of marine vinyl at that speed. But that really gives you control when you're running through your material. And then you can also speed it up because full speed on that with that little pulley is, 
that's still fast enough for most everything I think okay there you go and of course you got everything in between too as long as you can control it. So it's it's good. Just like kind of running a cordless drill with variable speed. Okay, bye. And yeah, look for my next video because I kind of go into that head. That foot lifter was sticking on me. As you can see, it's walking pretty good right now. But um, it was actually once that walker foot went, or the walking foot went down and lifted the vibrating foot up, it stayed up. That shaft right there, that bushing was so tight that it wouldn't let that go down, even with the spring load adjusted up quite high. So we're going to talk about that on the next video.